What is up guys? Justin here at the Cage JSA in Cromwell, Connecticut. Uh, we're coming at you with another strongman technique video. So today we're going to go over the uh, Axel Continental Clean and Press. Uh, this is a pretty standard strongman event, um, but when you post something on the internet and people don't know what the fuck they're looking at, they tend to uh, say some weird shit about it. So uh, we're going to go over proper technique. A uh, couple of training tips, proper footwear, um, and then how to program it and uh, implement it into your training to get the most out of the lift. So, uh, if you guys are interested in Continental Clean, clean and Press, Continental Clean and Press, please stay tuned and uh, hopefully you'll learn something. Coming back right now. All right, guys. So the first thing we're gonna go over before we touch the bar, set anything up, is footwear. So. For footwear, you want something with a nice solid sole. Uh, me personally, I use the Olympic shoes. These are actually uh, Adidas, Adidas Power, I believe they're called. I've had these for a, quite a while. These are the second ones. I think they have like Adidas Power 4 now. So, But these are still in really good shape. Um, as you can see, I like loud shoes. Um, the main thing you want with your shoe is something that's got a solid uh, sole on it. You don't want anything that's uh, like a basketball shoe with air in it or anything like that. You want to be nice and solid. Um, if you don't like the Olympic shoes, you can always go with regular chucks, nice flat sole. You're going to get good stability out of these as well. Um, so that is the first thing on the list. Nice solid shoes with a nice either flat surface. Uh, the Olympic shoes, something nice and solid that's not going to be squishy so that you can transfer your power from the floor into the bar without feeling like you're on uh, a stability ball because you want to be stable. So let's get into uh, technique next. Alright guys, so let's get into technique here. Um, so as far as stance wise, I personally go maybe just a little bit outside of my deadlift uh, stance. Maybe just about the same, maybe a little bit outside. Um, okay, obviously you want to be in the center of the bar. This one is marked with duct tape, depending on the axle you have. You might have markings on there, you might have to figure it out yourself. Um, and then from there, we're going to have our hands outside of our legs, um, as close as possible so that the pull is short as possible, okay? Now obviously, if the weight is light enough, we can clean it right up to our shoulders like a normal clean with a barbell, that's what we wanna do. Uh, this video is specifically going over the Continental. So basically what the Continental is, before I show you, um, you're gonna stop the bar right at your sternum, okay? Right on the top of your belly, um, hold it here, and then we're gonna kinda double dip and clean from that position. Uh, because of the diameter of this bar, and most of the time you're gonna have one that doesn't rotate, so it's really hard to get that uh, second pull, the explosiveness, that rotation, to get it all the way up to your shoulders. So this is how we clean uh, an axle when, it's, when it gets super heavy. So I'm gonna start double overhand. Um, you wanna go this way as, as long as you possibly can. Eventually, once it gets heavy, you're gonna have to switch to over under grip. We'll go over both of those, okay? So I'm gonna pull to here. As I'm here, we're gonna be squeezing in the bar uh, squeezing towards our body as hard as possible to keep that bar in that position. We're going to kind of end up a little bit leaning back and then before we do our second pop to get to our shoulders what we want to do is bring our hips so from here our hips are going to be kind of out in front. It's going to be hard to get any kind of drive from there so what we want to do is kind of bring our hips back quickly and then um, go forward so that we have some, some hip drive to get that bar from the sternum up to our shoulders. So, I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, double overhand. Back nice and flat, just like you would on a cleaner or a deadlift here. We're gonna come up, okay, right to here. Okay, so we're leaning back a little bit. Adjust our hands if we need to. Bring our hip forward, dip, and then right up to our shoulders, okay. So, I'll show you from the side too. Okay, so same idea. In this one, watch my hip position. Okay, so we're coming up. And see how my, my hip is forward to start. So before I go to dip and pop from the hip, I'm gonna bring it back and then get back under it. Okay, so if you don't do that, you're not gonna have the hip drive from this position. This is a really awkward position to try to, I see a lot of guys try to roll it up from here. You're really putting your, 
you're back in an awkward position and it's a very weak position. So what we want to do is, as we're pulling the bar in and our hip is out in front, we're going to bring our hip back so that it's back under our shoulders and that way we can use a uh, leg drive to pop that uh, bar up to our shoulders on that second round. Alright guys, so now I'm going to show you the uh, little difference with the over under grip. Um, Basically what I, what I do is I bring it up to this point first and then kind of lean back a little bit farther and quickly switch the hand over. I see some guys that um, will switch the hand over as they're pulling up. I've never done that, so I'm not going to teach you guys that one. Um, but if you want to kind of play with that, doing it nice and fast and catching it both hands over when it's on your, on your belly here, um, you're more than welcome to try that. I just have never done that before. So show you the way that I do it. So whatever hand under. Okay, we're gonna pull up just like we did before. Okay, switch, readjust if you need to, then hip forward, pop, pop. Okay. So, uh, key things to remember um, on this stance wise, it's gonna be about deadlift stance. Um, if you're going over under, obviously when you get to here, you have to switch whatever hand is under to over so they can get up to your uh, shoulders and be ready to press. I've seen a couple times people try to get it all the way up here with the over under grip and then try to, it's just not very efficient and you're gonna use a lot of energy um, just getting the bar in position. You're probably not gonna have much energy left to press with. So um, other than that, you wanna get your, um, you're squeezing the bar in towards your body, okay? to keep that in place where it is. And then from here, we're gonna bring our hips back before we pop and stand up with it. All right guys, so now we're gonna go over the uh, press portion. Portion. So we got through the hard part, cleaning up to the shoulders, okay? Um, as far as press goes, you can do strict press, push press, uh, jerk, split jerk, whatever you wanna do. Uh, and straw man is just get the bar overhead any way you can. Um, I personally do uh, thumbless grip here for press, so like this with a, my thumbs on the same side as my fingers. If you want to do full grip, um, you can. I just find the thumbless works better for me and it feels more comfortable. Um, so what we want to do have, if we can, uh, ideally is having the bar right across our shoulders, okay, right across the front rack, okay. Our elbows are going to be um, either directly under the bar or slightly in front, depending on what you're doing. For a push press, you want to be kind of more right underneath. For the jerk, you want to be a little bit more out in front if you can. Um, again, that's going to depend on your mobility shoulder-wise, um, but really work to try to get that bar resting on your shoulder because the, the higher the bar is, the less uh, transfer you're getting from your legs too because you're, you're having to hold the bar here and as you dip, the bar always moves around. If the bar is laying across your shoulders, you're not, the bar's not going to move as you're going for your dip or your strict press, whatever you're trying to do to transfer the power from your legs up through the bar. So work on getting that good position across your shoulders instead of holding it up out in front of your face. Okay, especially your heavyweight guys. Um, okay, so I'm gonna just get the bar in position, show you from the side, show you one from the front so you guys can see what it looks like, okay? So elbows are forward, bars across the shoulders, dip, drive, okay. All right guys, so on the dip, what we want is uh, hips go straight up and down, knees come out, okay? So we don't want, we don't want to be here and going forward with our knees like this. See how my, even with the Olympic shoes, my heels start coming off the ground like that, okay? So you want it to be like the top of the front squat. So you're gonna think about pushing knees out, hips are gonna come straight down. This is about as deep as you need to go. We're not squatting with it. Um, you know, we, we don't need a, a giant dip down. It's nice and quick, explosive. Um, and like I said, quick, not slow. So we're not, we're not here, we're not dipping and then trying to push like this, nice and quick. Okay, so push press obviously, dip, push, jerk, dip. Double, okay, and then strict press, you're just standing. Um, so main thing, 
Think about pushing your knees out. So knees out instead of knees forward. Knees out. Okay, not this. Your hip comes out of line and you're not transferring that power through your legs. Okay, so uh, let's go over a couple of different um, ways to train this as far as setting up uh, your training cycle and all that stuff. And then uh, that'll be the end of this, guys. So technique is over. Um, hope you guys got something out of it. And let's uh, talk a little bit about programming. Okay, guys. So uh, as far as training wise for the axle, for those of you, especially those of you who are just starting out uh, in strongman, um, the easiest thing to do is just replace all your pressing with an axle if you can. Um, so either get yourself an axle, go to um, Home Depot, buy some inch and a half uh, black iron pipe and weld some collars on there be pretty close uh, inch and a half should fit most standard plates or Olympic plates and um, go from there um, as far as the technique of the clean and press um, once you have the technique down uh, as far on the clean um, I would only train the clean portion if you have it in a competition coming up um, especially once you start getting pretty heavy with that it does take a good toll on your body just because of the position that you're in um, and the forces, you know, it's, it's, it's not the most comfortable thing to do all the time. Um, so I would, like I said, I would train the clean when you're, uh, working on it for a competition and then just train the pressing, uh, whenever you wanted to press, uh, that, that obviously the pressing could be done in place of your normal barbell pressing. You can use it in place of a, a barbell for benching, uh, floor press, any kind of pressing. Um, that you would want to do with the, with a regular barbell, you could do with the axle. All right, so I want to touch on uh, some a couple of little things, additional equipment um, you guys can use for this that will help you out. Obviously, we went over shoes, so Olympic shoes, flat shoes, something with a stable base. Um, obviously, you can use wrist wraps. Um, these are going to help a lot once you get to heavier weights. Obviously, that was pretty light, so I didn't have any of them on. I do use them once I get heavier, um, and then regular power belt. Um, it's a regular powerlifting belt. I prefer myself a thinner one, um, just because with the with the axle, there's a lot of pressure in that area there, and uh, you tend to pinch a lot there. Also, when you use a belt like this, you're gonna want the um, the buckle itself either on the side or in the back, because if you have the buckle in the front, um, you have a tendency to kind of hit the bar on that, and that's gonna really screw up your clean. Um, because obviously when you put it on, there's a you know bulge there. So you want that, like I said, either to the side or have somebody help you put the belt on, put it all the way to the back. Um, also, as far as a shirt, um, something like this with a nice, like a sticky logo on it um, is good. Or they do make actual grip shirts. I have not tried one, but I've heard really good things about them. Um, so something with a nice surface that's going to stick to the bar. Um, grip shirt and obviously chalk. Uh, chalk is definitely your friend in the, on the Continental with the axle. Um, load your shirt up with chalk, hands, shoulders if you need it to. Um, can't use too much chalk, I don't think, on this. So, uh, so that's it, guys. Um, hopefully this was informative for you guys, and hopefully you got something out of it. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot more of these, like I said. So uh, if you like the content, please uh, subscribe to the channel. Please like the video, share it out. Um, and uh, let me know what else you guys want to see down in the comments below. I'll try to put a couple links to some of the equipment that I talked about uh, down in the description box as well. All right, I will see you guys on the next video. In the meantime, work hard and be fucking great. I'll see you guys later.